Hello, I've been asked to run some DVC Pro format tapes, which I can normally do just fine. I have equipment for all the variants of DVC Pro, uh, and they come in several sizes. That's medium, that's large, they do an even larger, and I'll also take mini DV size tapes with a carrier, which I have. But the problem with these is they've been allowed to get moldy, and mold is stronger than the tape inside these cassettes. I have often demolded Video 8 tapes using a rig I've put together here uh, and a lot of manual work, uh, but not sure how easy it's going to be to demold DV type tape. It's quite rare for me to get this stuff that's moldy. Okay, let's see what I can do. So, looking at the sizes here, remember that this size is about the same size as a Video 8 tape, and the larger size, well, this is medium, they call it medium, is the same size tape precisely as is used on large DV or DV cam decks. And what's going on is the mould glues the tape together. So if you put it in the machine, you finish up like that. So uh, can I uh, tease the mould off the tape? Well, hmm. let's just start with, say, one here. Of all these tapes, uh, this is the only one that I managed to run. Uh, actually, it did snap, but fortunately beyond the end of the program material. So we'll leave that one because we don't care if it works or not. Some of these I didn't even load into the machine because it was so clearly going to snap straight away. And others I uh, tried in a machine and they snapped. So uh, let's have a look at one of these. This one snapped. See if I can... I'll start by repairing the snap and then let's see if we can uh, tease the mould off some of them. Normally I'm demoulding 8mm tapes up here, so I have a splicing block for 8mm. I'll need a quarter inch splicing block, which is the same as audio quarter inch tape. Right, the splicing block I'm going to be using is made by an American company called Editall. I don't think they're still in business. Uh, the quarter inch one, I'm not crazy about. I find the channel is a little bit deep. Uh, it's somewhat less deep and more curved on some of the other formats but it's what we have so it's what we're going to have to use uh, and first thing we need to do is take the tape apart so it feels a lot like a video 8 tape except that the uh, width is different and the spools are different underneath which is possibly going to make life a little bit hard but let's start by uh, just splicing the tape together this is a very typical mold break where it's not a clean snap across the tape. You get a long tail of tape like this, which unfortunately means you do lose some seconds of footage when this happens. And you can see more mould along here, possibly. You can actually see the mould on the tape reel there. Now that may be beyond the end of the recording, but there's no easy way for me to tell. Right, so in this case, the tape was rewinding when it snapped and it snapped due to mould on this side, not the supply spool, but on the take-up spool, so that clearly the tape had not been rewound. So there's going to be a tail of tape on here, and it's going to be joined by mould at the top or bottom surface. Well, you can tell by the shape of the tear that it started at the bottom of the tape. So the mould is actually hidden on the underside here. If I just carried on pulling that, it's quite likely that you'll hear the mould snagging away. So what I'll do sometimes, this can help, is give it a gentle tug. Not too much. And that can break off the mould and make it easier to wind it. But you can't do it too much, or you can cause new problems. Not just tape uh, stretching. You can get the situation where you snap the tape, but the mould still holds it together. So you finish up with a piece of tape on top of another piece of tape, which are joined by mould at the edges. And then, even if you, if you don't see that, even if you think you've cleared all the mould off the tape, when you come to run it, it'll come... a a drift because you've actually got a snap in the tape. As I'm working with such thin tape, I'll treat myself to a new blade for this job. Oh, 
Right, that uh, join is quite safe to run past the heads of the DVC Pro machine. I now need to make something of a decision amongst myself about whether I pull the tape from this way to this way, clear all the mould off there, or go the other way. Uh, there's much worse mould on this side. So what I'm going to do is mount this onto my rig. Well, there's a problem. My rig is really was originally built for half-inch tape spools, but it will take 8mm. not sure it's going to like this very small spool, but I'm going to have to give it a whirl. So I have a power supply here and I can set a low voltage to help me to pull the tape through and very low voltage I think and I can change the polarity quickly as well depending which way I'm going. So let's see if I can clear the mould. So I can feel the mould occasionally snagging on this but if I do this carefully I'll get it to avoid snapping. Okay you can see what I'm doing here. I've, on the left hand side here I've got a motor, it's actually from a V2000 video recorder which is set to very low uh, voltage and torque, it's about one and a half volts I've got on there at the moment and it's uh, on the uh, supply spool in this case and I'm feeding out tape here on the take up spool and I can feel if any mould is starting to snag on the tape and I can apply a little bit more pressure with my fingers and ease the tape away from the mould which tends to stick it together. And if I'm careful this way I can demould all these tapes uh, hopefully without any snaps. Uh, however it takes time. Uh, each tape, these tapes aren't particularly long, each of these tapes is taking me uh, about 15-20 uh, minutes to demould uh, and then I have to reassemble them. Uh, the longer tapes, the 120s, are going to take a bit longer so the whole process is going to take some hours. There may be better routes for doing this and I know one or two people have suggested other routes for doing this and there's also potentially a piece of equipment that I'll be buying uh, later on that somebody's built primarily for uh, dealing with sticky shed but can also lend itself to doing this job maybe a little bit more elegantly than the arrangement I have here with this particular motor. So this is how I'm going to demold these tapes. Ah, I can feel it snagging there now. You can hear it ticking. So I apply a bit of extra pressure with my fingers, slow it down. It tends to be that if you put more torque on it, you get it just right, you can snap off the mould uh, when it's unwinding. But if you just put it into a machine, it'll tend to just snap the tape. So it's a, a bit of a balancing act and it's uh, something of a, an art that you learn as you do this. Right, let's get on with it. Aha! Because I was talking to you and not paying attention, I have hit a, a bit of a tear. It hasn't torn the tape right through, but it has snagged it and caused a bit of tape damage. So what I can do is ease this off where it's snagged at the bottom and put some uh, I can basically repair the tape with splicing tape. There we are. So we've lost a little bit. There will be a little bit of data corruption, but with care, I can make that very little indeed. We won't really lose any footage. We'll just have a moment of uh, interrupted video if there's any recording on that part of the tape. Okay, I've minimized the damage there, so I can continue winding this tape through. This filter here, uh, it's not really designed for catching mould, but uh, it does. I find mould will just collect on the front surface of this uh, filter, which is designed for smoke. And then I can blow it out uh, at the front door uh, with uh, compressed air at a later time. You could do this by hand, not using a motor to help you at all just by winding it through bit by bit. It will take you hours, but if you have no alternatives, it's a way of doing this. Depends just how bad the mould is though. If they're extremely mouldy, you'll get continuous snaps. Okay, I'm feeding it through nicely again. I can feel it snagging again. I'm gonna be very careful. 
All right, it's getting really mouldy here. And be very careful. Try to prevent any more snaps or snags. All right, best will in the world. Sometimes it snags like that, so I have another small repair to do. This time it's snagged at the top. Okay, so you can see a little bit of damage there. And again, I'm going to repair it with tape. So I'm not going to cut the tape. That would do more damage to the uh, data than just repairing it as is. So again, a pretty good repair, that. That should run through the machine with little disturbance to the image. So uh, I've managed to wind that through to the end with just two snags, no more further complete snaps beyond the one that was on the end of the tape. Uh, some of the other tapes I've been working on, I've managed to get them through with no snags or snaps at all, which is ideal. Uh, so there should be little or no corruption on some of these tapes. So I've just got to reassemble this shell and we can run the tape. Reassembly is not rocket science, uh, but you need to be a little careful. There's a spring here on this latch, and that can be a coil spring or a leaf spring. And there can, I think, be a spring on this side as well. doesn't seem to be on this one. There's a spring here. You don't want to let that go. This is the ratchet mechanism that stops uh, tape slack. This is the record play switch, and sometimes there's uh, gold contacts on here for uh, identifying the tape type. So it's not that dissimilar to reassembling a video 8 tape. And now we refit the five screws. Right, so here's one of the larger tapes. These are much larger. Uh, they contain 126 minutes of tape rather than the 33 minutes of the small ones. Uh, some of them have an extra screw about here. Let me see if we find one of them. So yeah, some have an extra screw in that location. Right, I've just demolded this. So this is one of the larger tapes. So there's a lot more tape in this. It took quite a lot longer. Uh, it's a 126 minute rather than a 33 minute. And I had a couple of snags, uh, small tears, but not complete snaps. But they were both near the very end of the tape on this side. So very unlikely there's any recording actually on them. Uh, but there was quite a lot of mold on this tape uh, when we started. Have a look at the uh, spool when I started the job. So uh, I'll reassemble that, and that's another tape done. It's the last of the uh, large tapes I've got to do, and uh, quite a lot of mould there, especially towards the far inside. But with any luck, uh, the actual recording will have finished long before then. Mould can be on both the top and bottom sides of the spool, or, as in the case of this particular bit of uh, tape, the mould caused a snap simultaneously on both the top and bottom uh, sides of the spool. I've really hit a really bad piece here where I just cannot tease it off by pulling on the spool and I'm just going to have to pull it off with this dentist pick like that and then go one rotation and it'll probably catch in the same spot again. Not quite so bad. You can see that each rotation it's snagging at the top. It can be very time consuming when you get a really bad patch of tape like this. So final reassembly of this tape. 
This one has taken me about an hour to demould and get it into playable condition. And here's another one that was so bad it wasn't even put in a machine. That's uh, a right state, so that's going to take some serious work, even though it's only one of the shorter tapes. So we'll try our old technique of give it a tug and see if we get any swirls of mould, but I don't think we will. Mm, tiny bit maybe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's helped. That's definitely helped a bit. I'm not applying too much pressure. Some of the mould is broken into swirls, some of it stayed in clumps. Right, let's get started on it. So you can see where the mould is in those swirly patterns. And that's ideal if you can get it to do that by a little bit of gentle pulling. Because it means that the mould is not grabbing a tape from one layer to the next. Uh, and so it should hopefully unwind without any snaps or snags. There we are, I've come to the end of demoulding all of these DVC Pro tapes. Interesting, they're not all made with the same size screws. Smaller screws used on the smaller tapes. And here's what I spend most of my time demoulding these days. It's a Video 8 tape, which is snapped due to mould. I'll give it the tug treatment. Nah, nothing happening there, so we're not getting that lovely swirly pattern. I just need to uh, pull it through and demould that. This is for a separate job. So these tapes can be played now on this DVC Pro machine. I particularly like this one because unusually for DVC Pro, it has a firewire port connected to the PC. So when I say start capture on the PC software, it starts playback on the uh, DVC Pro deck. This is of course something you'd expect to happen on Sony equipment such as DV Cam, HDV, Digital 8, that sort of equipment it has the same communications through the firewire port. Now I've been working primarily here on DVC Pro which is a relatively uh, unusual format but everything we've been talking about applies to other DV formats such as DV cam and mini DV as on, uh, used on domestic uh, camcorders. And we also did touch momentarily on uh, video 8 and hi 8 and the process is much the same and I did a video about that some time ago as well. Uh, also another video I did some time ago covered uh, a little bit about clearing mould from a Betacam SP tape, which is professional videotape format, broadly based on Betamax. And I've also had from the same customer with these DVC Pro tapes, uh, a Digi Beta or digital Betacam tape, which also had mould on it. And I had to clean the mould off that. And then it turned out the tape was blank. Oh, that's unfortunate. But anyhow, uh, I hope you've learned something from all my work today on these uh, mouldy tapes. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.